We have the technology now to create the best democracy we've ever seen, a totally networked society where everybody has a view and everybody can express it. But equally, we have the technology that could be used as a global panopticon, and by that I mean that the state can watch everything we do online. What we're seeing now is a, a very much a fight back from governments, and not just autocratic governments, but also the more autocratic parts of democracies, so the military, the police, the intelligence services, uh, where they definitely don't like the idea of a free and open network of communication, and they want to be able to survey that network and survey our communication. And that's really what's at stake um, in, in this sort of information battle, is, is who has, do we have a right to communicate freely, or must we be sort of suspects by default and, and have to kind of prove our innocence. I think in a sense, at the moment, we're already, we're, we're already losing the fight. Like the rapid commercialization of the network is something that really concerns hackers because, you know, for as many people as use Twitter, there are so many more people that use these major corporate platforms like Twitter, Facebook and Google. And they're, you know, there are, these are not the platforms that the hackers themselves are using. They're really excited about what they can run on their own machines and communicate with others, whereas these platforms sit in the centre of the network and are what we call intermediaries. Um, and they're a focal point for governments and governments who wish to, re to regulate the net. We see with laws like um, the Anti-Counterfeiting Trade Agreement, ACTA, stuff like SOPA and PIPA in the US, that intermediaries like Google, um, but also you know, credit card providers and you know, the DNS system, the domain name system, the governments are looking for points of control in the network. And these large corporate players that many of us normal web users are flooding to are providing those points of control. That's a one of the big problems we have. We have all the centralized infrastructure that we l rely on, like Twitter and Facebook, WordPress, whatever. And uh, I think that's one big mistake, that we rely on this central infrastructure. Of course, this is because of the way the internet grew, but we have to outgrow that. We have to become the internet. We have to interconnect again, because actually in the beginning it was an interconnection between equals, and now it became this client-server model, and we have to go back to the interconnection between people. Well, what's, what's interesting is that we've seen a long-term process. The internet started out as exactly the type of decentralized system that we're advocating. In, at the time of its inception, the internet was, was the greatest distribution of, of you know, communications technology. But what happened was, uh, you know, as, as technology evolved, you, you, you had, in 94, you had the web, uh, the advent of the web, and that drove adoption by, by, by normal users. But what happened was, the service providers felt no need to build distributed networks. They were part of a distributed network. The internet backbone is a distributed network. And, and that's exactly why the solution that we advocate at the FNF is, is to participate in the global internet. There's nothing wrong with the global internet. What is wrong is the model of the actual networks that we're purchasing access from. So those networks, when they tried to build out into everybody's homes, that's when they started to, to, to build hierarchical networks. On va arriver dans un moment où il va faire des choix. Euh, soit on veut de la sécurité, soit on veut de la liberté. Et ça ne va pas être compatible. Et on va avoir à un moment, les gens vont vouloir leur confort, euh, vont vouloir leur bel iPod, leur bel iPad euh, tout neuf, qui fait exactement ce que Apple a décidé qu'il ferait et rien d'autre. Et euh, c'est une prison dorée. C'est voilà, je, quand, quand on prend un iPod, ben, il faut prendre l'iTunes. Pour prendre l'iTunes, il faut idéalement, ça marche bien avec un Mac. Euh, on ne peut synchroniser des applications que ce qui a été acheté sur l'App Store. Enfin, c'est une prison dorée, c'est un enfermement, c'est un renoncement total à toutes les libertés. Pourquoi Pour avoir un, un gadget à la mode. Und wir sind doch jetzt schon in einer Zeit, wo, äh, wo eine eigene Domain zu besitzen, dich privilegiert im Netz. Eine eigene Domain haben ist Privilegierung. Die meisten Menschen haben eine E-Mail-Adresse bei irgendeinem Freemail-Anbieter oder bei ihrem Provider. Oder jetzt neu bei Facebook oder bei Google halt. Äh, haben 
keinen Webspace, weil sie gar nicht wissen, was sie damit anfangen sollen, weil sie nicht wissen, wie leicht es ist, eine Internetseite zu bauen, wo man seinen Inhalt reinstellen kann. Nein, sie benutzen die Tools, die ihnen die Firmen bieten. Das kann ich auch verstehen. Das ist ja total einfach, über Google Plus oder über Facebook Inhalte zu verteilen. Dass es ein, ein Wallet Garden ist, das verstehen die Leute überhaupt nicht. Die verstehen die Gefahr überhaupt nicht, weil sie die anderen Chancen gar nicht kennen. The state where an ISP acts only as an intermediary, that is like as somebody who, who only makes sure that you can access whatever you want freely at the time of your convenience, um, is uh, referred to as uh, net neutrality. In the European Commission and at the European level, you look at the European Parliament, there's um, been debates about net neutrality that have unfortunately been relatively unfruitful. Um, also in many member states, ISPs, particularly uh, providers of wireless internet and wireless communication, um, have taken liberties with um, restricting or infringing on the free choice of the users to communicate or receive information. De toute façon, là, on est à un moment charnière. Soit on bascule dans l'Internet civilisé, euh, où l'industrie du divertissement et du télécom et politique euh, prennent le contrôle d'Internet, altèrent radicalement son architecture et euh, mettent fin à l'universalité qui nous permet à tous de participer, de créer, d'inventer, d'innover. Soit on arrive à faire passer nos messages dans toutes les sphères de la société pour que dès que quelqu'un touche à Internet et son architecture, ce soit euh, une, une, une raclée politique euh, comme euh, a pu l'être en France la dopi euh, qui se prenne dans la figure. Parce que, en gros, tu touches un cheveu d'Internet, tu, tu te fais défoncer. Euh, il faut qu'on continue nos actions. Là, est, on, est, on est vraiment un tournant. But we are seeing the Netherlands recently made a net neutrality law which establishes uh, some kind of right for um, Dutch citizens and Dutch uh, participants in the um, online environment to um, receive whatever they want at uh, whichever time and at a firm price, like so that you don't price discriminate between different sorts of different contents at the um, internet service provider level. Und das Netz ist halt auch mehr als Facebook, Google und, und Amazon und eBay. Es ist halt offen und ähm, die meisten Menschen kommen ja gar nicht über ihre sozialen Netzwerke hinaus. Um die geht es aber auch gar nicht, wenn wir von äh, freiem Netz reden. Also wir reden von denen, die das Netz bauen, die es erschaffen, die es mit Inhalten füllen. Das sind die, die das Netz machen. Die anderen Menschen benutzen es. Das ist auch in Ordnung. Es muss nicht jeder gestalten. Das, aber ähm, wir müssen die Möglichkeit offen halten, dass jeder gestalten kann. Und das geht halt nicht, wenn das Netz kontrollierbar ist.